Hi, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This video is part of a series of build logs following the construction of a bar top arcade that uses a 28 inch screen. Follow along for the steps I use and see the process I take when building. Rather than skipping over parts of the build, I will be showing almost every single step, which is why this series has been split into multiple videos. Please check out the playlist link in the description, like, subscribe to show support for this channel. In today's video, we're gonna paint the cabinet, I'm going to pull apart the TV in order to wire some speakers, kind of an extension, and I'm going to be adding T-molding. I'm going to be skipping the royalty-free music for this one. Enjoy. So before I can paint the cabinet, I need to make sure everything has been smoothed out, uh, all scratches have been filled, and I've sanded everything beautifully. I'm going to skip most of that. Here I'm drilling a hole to set up a cam lock. That way if I wanted to actually put a lock on the back of the arcade, I can. I start by drilling a larger hole, and then I do the smaller hole for the actual shaft of the cam lock to fit in. For this one, I'm just using spray paint. I'm going to go through about two to three cans to do this. I'm going to try to do a couple coats, and I'm going to be showing you the entire time of me painting. Fast motion, of course, but I'm not skipping a single spray. Now, you could also use roller paint, or, you know, you go buy a gallon of it and then roll it on. That will give you a different texture. Uh, really, the choice is up to you. I thought I'd save a little bit of money from this. This has a paint and primer kind of in one. It works well for wood. It looked great on this cabinet. I didn't have any issues with any of the paint scratching off. After about 20 to 30 minutes, I usually do a second coat, and I think I do a total of three coats here. So before I assemble the actual cabinet with the electronics inside, I want to test it and make sure everything works. My plan here with this was actually to take the speakers out of the TV and remount them in the arcade cabinet in a slightly different spot. I didn't really need to do this, but I thought this would be a nice touch. I would probably do it differently in the future, but I'm still going to show you how I did it. So I pulled apart the back of the TV, kept all the little screws in a little baggie so that I wouldn't lose them, and I wanted to figure out how hard this was going to actually be to accomplish. It was actually pretty easy, but a little bit time consuming. So I opened it up, it seems pretty simple, the speakers came out very easily. And it's all held in there to a little uh, board with a little snap connector. So I figured if I just cut the wires, spliced in some new ones using some butt connectors <laughs> and some bullet butt connectors, some wire, I could extend this and stick these speakers anywhere I wanted in the cabinet. So I grab my strippers, strip the wire, and I'm going to be crimping them on. I could also solder the wires, but I wanted to show this way instead. I believe I'm putting on roughly 60 centimeter extension to this so I can stick them in the cabinet underneath the artwork marquee. So by putting the bullet connectors on, I'm able to take the wires on and off from the speakers fairly quickly and easily in case I need to take the arcade apart for maintenance. It's nice. I'm going to crimp them on there. There's different methods, different tools for this, but this worked. Just make sure to test your crimps so that they're actually attached. So I want to clean up these wires, make them look a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to pull them into straight lines, wrap some electrical tape around it, call it a day. Nobody's really going to see this when it's all done. There, that just cleans it up a little bit. All right, let's plug it back in, test it, and see if the speakers actually still work. Uh-oh. Got a solution for that. I'm going to drill a hole in the back of the TV, pop those wires through, reconnect it, and it shouldn't cause any issues. I'm taping down the wires just in case somebody yanks on it. It's not going to yank the connector out. When this was all done, I only had 30 extra screws. No problem. So 
So, no problem, the speakers work great. Now it's time to figure out the rest. All right, on to the tea molding. I got this from teamolding.com. The price is decent. You buy it by the foot with, That's I believe, hard. a 20 foot minimum. You don't necessarily need these tools to do this, but I found this has worked really well. For going around a corner, you want to cut a little notch out, and that way your tea molding is able to bend easier. Anytime there's a curve, this is a good idea to do. As I'm doing this, I'm going back over it, looking for bumps or anywhere that I might have missed. I want to make sure it's nice and tight. You can use an X-Acto blade instead of those side cutters if you want. Use whatever you have. Now those aren't chipmunks in the background. Those are my students there for the arcade club at lunchtime. Now normally I don't need to actually write down where my cut is, but I thought that'd be a good visual reminder for the video. In the future, I probably wouldn't do such a sharp uh, little turn there. I would keep it a smooth transition. Might cut a little bit nicer. Either way, I think it turned out great. Line it up as best you can. I set it up so that this cut would be on the bottom and you wouldn't really see it anyways. So flip it over, do the other side. Give it a little flip. Thanks, Sean. If you were using artwork for your arcade, you'd probably want to put it on before the tea molded. That way, any excess, you can just hide underneath it and then cut it off with an X-Acto blade. This is where I should have used an X-Acto blade. Probably would have got a nicer cut. Now I'm going to be adding team molding to the control pan as well, as well as the very bottom piece. They're going to be the same length, so I'm actually just going to cut it out here once, measure it, and do that same cut for the bottom. Watch out for any sharp objects. You could cut yourself. Careful with those knives. All right, let's assemble this, see how it kind of looks. Oh, I love that paint job. I find the green and black were just a really nice color scheme to work with. So I did a very simple job for these speakers. I think I would have changed it if I did it in the future. I pretty much just added one hole for the sound to come through and I kind of carved a little funnel in with a chisel so the rest of the speaker wouldn't be vibrating against the panel. In hindsight, this maybe wasn't the best idea, but it worked, it's functional, and it sounds really, really good. So that's basically the end of today's video. If you don't like spiders, maybe close your eyes for the next 30 seconds. Which direction is it heading? It's gonna run left. Hit its butt, it's on this side. Right, butt's over what here. What if we just make it, you think it's fair? Oh, I don't know, as long as it doesn't jump on me. Ah! Oh! Jeez. All right, the royalty-free music is back. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for the next video where we're gonna do some more stuff. The next video we're going to be installing it and wiring things. We're going to securely mount the Raspberry Pi. We're going to set up the buttons and the joysticks to make sure they actually work. And we're going to do some educational testing with some gameplay. Links are going to be in the description for next week's and any past videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video with literally every single person you know. Thank you so much for watching.
Terima kasih. Terima kasih.